moving on to our next speaker uh, he is a very established uh, md physician cardiologist and diabetologist he is dr alok chopra has established ashlok hospital in new delhi the first multi specialty of its kind and has catered corporates embassies elite families and government organizations under this roof his belief that something which restores the disruption of the harmony and balance which runs beyond our control and command and which are not divided by geographical locations symptoms or diseases it's a network of interconnected systems which are dynamically interacting with each other like an orchestra with gut and mind as conductors his own daivyam wellness helps people in reversal of chronic disorders cardiometabolic conditions autoimmune conditions hormonal aging and immunity build up uh, he has also established a, 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 a renowned functional medicine practitioner and also a member of the uh, indian association of functional medicine over to you sir your topic uh, his topic for today is uh, all about fibromyalgia he is going to put some light on that and how functional medicine tackles and treats these kind of conditions thank you so much sir for joining us okay okay so we are going to talk about uh, fibromyalgia i picked up this uh, subject because it's a very difficult subject because primarily uh you know uh, nobody really knows how to uh, diagnose it and that is the biggest problem that we face today and uh, even the people who don't have it think they have it or the people who are also having it also wondering why the doctors are not helping them why is there guilt and shame in it so that's the one of the reasons and trying to put uh, you know fibromyalgia in uh, half an hour is like putting an elephant into a dog house but anyway we'll try our best uh, mostly it affects women younger age group and uh, uh, in the younger so in the younger age group and is triggered by early trauma a very important one and some amount of psychological issues environmental factors play a role and so does genetics next so now the most common symptom this i want to focus on that a typical feature is global affecting both the upper and lower limbs both sides of the body including the torso it's not in one region or even in several regions global pain is felt all over the body it's widespread with an acute sensitivity to touch sound and light even sometimes you know a light pat on the back and while the pain is real the source is mysterious and this is the hallmark of global pain so never forget that because there's so many pain issues and so many pain uh, you know illnesses when we mustn't uh, mix up with that what happened Okay, other common symptoms: widespread deep pain, exhaustion, fatigue, non-refreshing sleep, touch sensitivity, IBS, joint stiffness, depression, anxiety, brain fog, irritable bladder, brain fog, headaches. Now, what I'm trying to say here is that these are so common in other illnesses, so we have to keep a very clear focus to see, uh, you know, what is next. So, to qualify for a diagnosis of uh, fibromyalgia we have to have a minimum of 11 out of 18 anatomical areas covered all over our body now uh, at the end of the uh, uh, the lecture there is a uh, i have put some uh, pictures which will tell us where those figures are and 11 out of 18 must be there i have also got a picture of <clears throat> how to diagnose it because that is the main thing okay So now look at this. The functional issues which look like look at the number of things. Look at the number of illnesses which can mimic it: hypothyroidism, mitochondrial dysfunction, adrenals, Lyme disease, ankylosing spondylitis, cancers, lupus, MS, diabetes, scleroderma. All that you know, all that is in front of you. All that can look like fibromyalgia. So will the real fibromyalgia stand up? now you see these are the three things which really confuse it musculoskeletal disorders now here we must say that these are the common mistakes which are made muscle knots trigger points myofascial pain spinal joints disc prolapse spinal cord narrowing tendonitis pinched nerve all of this is there and it can mimic it functional medicine functional problems food allergies reactions to medications mitochondrial dysfunction endocrine and neurotransmitter issues nutritional deficiencies adrenal fatigue etc 
Conventional medical illnesses, heart and lung diseases, multiple sclerosis, hypothyroid, and ankylosis. These are the things which can accompany uh, fibromyalgia, but it should not be confused for uh, fibromyalgia. And the way to do it is to keep on, keep on questioning yourself, write a notebook, write on a laptop, continue. How widespread is the pain? How global is the pain? How much does it affect your daily work? How much is your sleep disturbance? What about brain fog? Focusing, memory, anxiety, depression, IBS. By the way, IBS is a very common association. Answer these questions again and again. Write again every week. Look into your issues with trauma, physical and emotional, especially in the formative parts of your life. And I'm mentioning that very often because very often it starts from there and we don't realize that that is the starting point, but it is an important part of that. And this trauma self-report is attached here, right there. You uh, just go back, just go back. Yeah, no, forward. Yeah, this, oh, no, no. Next, this trauma self-report form, I want anybody to go through it. You don't have to, uh, you know, fill it up. This yes and no is only meant for you to understand that this early trauma self-report is the primary reason of deciding of where functional uh, fibromyalgia started and where is it going. So if you responded yes, uh, okay. So now the classical thing, abnormal changes in pain processing in the brain with an exaggerated presentation, and this response does not fit the stimulus. Annoying and painful night lights, scars, routine music may feel cacophonic, affectionate embrace, pat on the back, children praying loudly makes it irritating, heat and cold is overplayed, the whole world feels hostile. IBS again may feel excessively painful, depression, anxiety is exaggerated, and even when one's sleeps, it doesn't have a really a refreshing one. <clears throat> now, here again, a very, I'm focusing more on the method of diagnosis because, of course, diet is terribly important, but we've already talked about it. There are certain aspects of diet which are specific for this, which I will uh, talk about. But this is a very crucial point. Tender points versus trigger points. Our aim is to find the tender points, not the trigger points. So tender points should not be confused with trigger points. Trigger points are myofacial pain, stiff muscles, decreased range of motion, knots, compressed spinal disc, you know, like a large shoulder uh, joint, referred pain. All of that is misinterpreted as widespread, which is the hallmark of uh, fibromyalgia. Trigger points feel different to touch than tender points, and they feel like knots or nodules under a tight band of muscles, and they feel different to touch, as I said. Tender points do not have distinct textual abnormalities. They simply feel tender to the person. Tender points are the key to the diagnosis of fibromyalgia. Trigger points are not. Fibromyalgia is not a muscle disorder. It's not a muscle disorder. It's a global pain syndrome with tender points. Tender points hurt. One will flinch, pull back. It's not an autoimmune condition. It's not a systemic inflammatory condition. So please understand and do not mistake it for anything else. So look at the number of musculoskeletal illnesses which mimic is it. Malalignment, bone joints, poor posture, trigger points, disc degeneration, pinched nerves, postural distortions, toxic loads, tendonitis. All of them, I think all of us have had some form of the other due to injury or due to other illnesses. And we also, you know, go into the seat of an uh, orthopedic surgeon or a neurological surgeon or, uh, you know, all that. But nobody ultimately focuses on the point that we are talking about. Go ahead. So now there is a 21-day fibromyalgia fix foundation plan. There is an eating plan. Now here I have to emphasize that this is not a weight loss program. It is to make you healthy with less pain and more energy. And we do follow some of the tenets of what we have talked about, but it's a little different. We start slowly. First 21 days, two special detox shakes. Detox is very important here. One meal and a variety of snacks with healthy proteins. Supplements taken twice a day and carefully selected. There's the toxin loading program. You know, which you already know, where you know toxins from agriculture products, food products, and all the toxins from your other metabolic functions. Next, please. Movement and relaxation. 
very, very crucial. This involves not too much exercise, but targeted, not just rest and sleep, moderate to low intensity exercises, simple stretches, alternating with rest and relaxation, emphasis on mobility, stretching, nothing which will make you feel overexerted or breathless. Moderate walking, yoga, rebounding, very important. Rebounding and mini trampoline is very good. Explore and rid yourself of all the allergies, sensitivities, intolerances, elimination diets, allergenic foods, inflammatory reactions, and immune responses. Simply remove all the nonsense things like soya and gluten, packed food juices, liquid oils. Plan is to, to do two pleasant tasting, satisfying high proteins, detoxifying nutrient dense shakes per day, one regular meal per day of fresh vegetables, lean protein, good supplements, reduce oxidant stress and eliminate all the toxins. <clears throat> Movement and relaxation. Again, uh, we've talked about it. Later, it will be two meals a day with detox shakes and rest of your for the rest of your life. We've missed something. Let's go back. Let's go back, please. Yeah, I think we've, we've done that. So okay. was the last one, and this is the yeah, next. Not, not right. Okay, now uh, very often we start with detox shakes because they are the most important one. And the ones I've mentioned are the ones which are helping a lot. Vegetable protein, greens, quality, uh, good quality, soluble, insoluble fiber. Protein is the key ingredient here. Avoid whey and rice protein from protein powders. Detox occurs in two phases. Phase one breaks the toxins and makes them water soluble. Phase two removes them by conjugation, which means the toxin will bind with something which will eliminate it. Conjugators are more often sulfur amino acids from protein. Green and red foods, broccoli, spinach, kale, the stuff that you already know, and supplements like proteolytic enzymes, NSC, gluta, amino acids like glycine, methionine, and taurine. Now that's a typical day. Let's see the typical day. Start with a herbal tea, ginger, peppermint, chamomile, hibiscus. Tone your nervous system by hot or cold hydrotherapy. Do some exercise, stretching and relaxation. Start with a hot morning brew. And this is a very nice thing that you can do. Even other people can look at it. Half a cup of filtered water, half a large lemon juice, pinch of thyme uh, pepper, stir, fill the rest with hot water and drink. This stimulates the natural digestive enzymes and regulates your sugar thing. Wait for about 15, 20 minutes for your hot drink and the shake or other breakfast choices. Then comes the shake or the breakfast choice. Lunches, meals from the menu plan, unless you drink the shake and take a meal at dinner time. Between meals, have a mild snack like celery, carrot, cucumber. And later in the day, relaxation exercise to wind up, hydrotherapy, warm bath, Epsom salts, magnesium, and do consume, consume some extra water. So this is a very typical day. Now, this is something which you can just take uh, and, uh, you know, make a picture or you can get that from there. No point getting into too much of the details, but the point here is that the protein powder is a very important point. Yeah, yeah. Eating guidelines, this is very important. No processed packaged food, only organic food. Reduce your starchy vegetables, lean protein, no sugars at all, no dairy at all, no gluten in any form. Can do red rice, quinoa, steel cut oats, wild amaranth, no alcohol or caffeine, and gradually we can build up on that. Now, you know, I've divided this into produce, protein, and have a quick look down the line. I don't need to, uh, you know, go it by one by one. But of course, uh, you know, you can always take it from the, uh, in the end, you can all get that thing. So produce first, protein, then condiments, oils, and fat. Take it one by one, go over it, and make sure that you take two or three from each time, and every day we can keep on changing that. This is again something, you know, which is jazzing up, you make it, uh, you know, uh, you need to get, don't get bored with what you're having. So make it sweeter, make it thicker, make it healthier, add some zest to it, but jazz it up so that you can enjoy doing what you're doing uh, in a very difficult illness. Chocolate fix is also very good. It's a nice, all of them, even non-people who don't have them would love to do that. It would be very nice. Okay, so 21 days is the main thing. Uh, as we said earlier, uh, herbal tea, your uh, detox shake, detox supplement. Herbal tea, detox shake, detox supplement. Lunch we already talked about, a regular gluten-free lunch or one or two shakes. 
uh, dinner, same as lunch. As you notice, we are talking more about shakes, more about making nutritional density. And this uh, is easier to do uh, when you do uh, you know, the smoothies and shakes. Now, this, as I said earlier, just go back again, uh, it's, it's not a calorie restrictive thing. Uh, and if you get hungry between meals, you can snack on whole foods in moderation, including nuts, preferably raw and not peanuts, hummus, raw or steamed vegetables, low glycemic fruit, and if you need a snack, you can eat one. So, you know, it's not about intermittent fasting or thing. Don't confuse intermittent fasting with this. Not that it's not important, but here it's more important to satisfy yourself, be good to yourself, and see what is good for you, especially in such a nonsense illness. We all know about this glycemic uh, index. I just wanted to uh, tell you about how to do that. Take the food glycemic index, divide it by 100, multiply it by the grams of carbs, excluding fiber, in a typical serving size, and you can calculate the uh, you know, glycemic load. Above 20 is high, 11 to 20 is average, and below 11. So you can do that. You know, it's not just doing arithmetic here, but I think it matters a lot. And we all know what the you know good fruits are. Now here, I suppose I need to just talk a little bit about fructose. Fructose is of two sorts, the industrial fructose, which is seen anything which in a packaged process, pesticides or preserved or even transported. You know, someone says, but doc, you know, I've had, I've had avocados. Where did you get it from? From Australia. And by the way, by the time it's come there, all sorts of things have already gone on it. So please make sure that you don't, uh, you know, foul up on that. And always eat fruit soon after a meal. Big Pharma has told us that to eat fruit on an empty stomach for A, B, C, D reasons. It's not true. Our grandfathers, great grandfathers used to give us fruit uh, immediately after a meal. Reason is that fructose is not a metabolizable item. When it's not metabolizable, it, it, uh, metabolizable, it cannot go into the bloodstream. And when it doesn't go into the bloodstream, it has to find a home and that home is the liver. And that's how we get all our problems. A lot of people are saying, you know, no, uh, fruit juice doesn't raise the sugar. It doesn't because it's the fructose and fructose is not entering into the blood. So please do not make this mistake regardless of what any anything says. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, you know, I'm not an, uh, against any Ayurveda, but Ayurveda is also preaching this. So please make sure that we change this. Uh, just go through this, uh, take up one or two sample uh, breakfast op uh, options. I've uh, you know, made a lot of time to put together a lot of these uh, recipes. And uh, so just have a look at it. It'll, other people without FM may also like it, but that's one of the typical breakfast options. Go on. Typical lunch or dinner option. Sounds nice, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. It looks very, very nice. We put all the things together. Go on ahead. Okay, I'm sure a lot of you are slurping away anyway. So this is a good, uh, we'll just go back again. Yeah, healthy snack option. Keep healthy snacks on. Again, unlike intermittent fasting, unlike that, please do not look at that. This is not a uh, you know, diabetic diet, we are talking purely on FM. I'm, you know, repeatedly mentioning that. Okay. Now, once this is done, go ahead. Now, you have to have, after this is done, you need a maintenance diet and you need a detox diet. It doesn't end here. That's the problem with FM. So again, some breakfast options, you can look at it. They are different from your main uh, uh, recipes. And, but the maintenance is very important because all of this we need uh, anti-inflammatory, allergen-free diet with helpful supplements, obviously gluten-free, soy-free, dairy-free, adequate protein, preferably from animal but good veggie sources, a lot of phytonutrients from uh, organic veggies and fruit, and do look at it in the end. Next, please. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, yeah. Now, toxins and detoxification. Detox is a continuous process, a complex cellular detoxification, which would be at work all day and every day. Do not slacken. Minimize plastics, engage in screen brushing, hydrotherapy, Epsom salt baths, filtered water, no microwaves at all, and all these uh, arsenic, mercury, you know, do, uh, do your uh, oligo scans and make sure that you get rid of it. And all of that, so many of our people will help us 
in you know creating all this uh, detoxification procedures but this is a big daddy here in in uh, fibromyalgia six minutes to go just to remind us okay that. now identify dirty dozen now you know all of them when you see you say hey this is good stuff man you know what why aren't we why are we calling it dirty dozen because these are the food with the heaviest doses of agricultural pesticides and preservatives, unfortunately, despite being so, therefore, have some a UV box, put it in the ozonizer, put it in a, you know, dish, uh, in, in, in a container of baking soda overnight, at least get rid of anything, colorings and any coverings that are also present. Next. These are the don'ts, processed foods, gluten, dairy, beef, farmed fish, the dirty dozen items. Special note on soya products, no soya's at all. Next. And these are the do's. Drink four quarts of water, clean water, high quality multi-strain probiotic, high quality multivitamin mineral supplements, more fiber, half a pound of a brassica family food, lots of veggies from the clean 15, which is written there, real unprocessed food, use turmeric, but not pepper. In, in this case, pepper is good. Use oil carefully. And these are your clean 15. Please take it down and see all these wonderful items which we can use freely. Go ahead. Now, again, this is another uh, form of recipe that we have put together. Each one is different. There are some uh, similarities. So your the first thing, then your maintenance thing, and now your detoxification. So it's not that easy. You have to transition from A, B, and C and ending up with detoxification. All right, you can wait again. You want to go on? FFP has three components. This is the slide. Should I go ahead? Yeah, let's get on with it. Can you hear me? Mm. I guess, yeah. Uh, this, can you, can you yeah. hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, sir. Yes, FFP okay. has three components. That's the slide we are at. Okay. So this is the yeah this is the uh, fibromyalgia fix foundation plan. It has three components. First is the anti-inflammatory detox eating plan for three weeks. Two special and I'm coming back to the thing. Two we uh, for three weeks two special detox shakes, one meal and many snacks. As I said, not a weight loss program, but to be healthy with less pain and more energy. Ample protein, hunger pangs. Choose from healthy snacks like fruit, almond butter, nuts, straws, and veggies. Next. Toxin lowering plan. Now, reduce exposure to toxic chemicals, agricultural food products, food toxins, body metabolic waste, minimal plastic use, no heating in plastics, use glass or ceramic, engage in screen brushing, shower brushing, loofah, hydrotherapy, alternate hot and cold showers, infrared saunas, red lights, I missed out on that, red lights are very important, Epsom bath salts and washcloth rubs will raise up magnesium also, no micros, no stove ups, no ovens, Use cast iron pans, no Teflon or synthetic nonstick pan. Now we are I'm over emphasizing it because every little miss here is going to ramp up your problems in fibromyalgia. So make sure that this is all done. Even the people who are, don't have it or who have many multiple type of musculoskeletal diseases must go back to what we have talked about because you don't make should not make mistakes between the real fibromyalgia and uh, the uh, illnesses which mimic it. And this is the final foundation plan, which is also gentle stretching, progressive muscle relaxation, guided imagery, very important, uh, low to moderate intent, low to moderate intensity exercises with simple stretches, walking slowly, easing yoga, easy yoga, and rebounding that we talked about. Okay. <clears throat> PMR, best done lying down, can be done while sitting, but you can even do it when you're traveling. Minimize the distraction like TVs, wear good clothes, slow breathing, go through all the muscles, tensing for five seconds, releasing the tension, relaxing for 10 seconds. All these little, little things, you know, you imbibe in your daily life when you're sitting and doing nothing or sitting in the car and all these areas must be covered. Pranayam is very important. You must learn diaphragmatic breathing. Anyone who's interested in uh, listening to me from Pranayam 
is welcome because I am doing it in a different way and I'm doing it in a manner which uh, will be very easy to do. And otherwise, you know, pranayam ends up like a breathing exercise. It isn't a breathing exercise. Guided imagery is absolutely wonderful. The, whatever you think in your mind and send to the universe can happen. You learn how to, ex, you know, um, uh, to, this is extremely important. Focus relaxation to create harmony between your mind and body. Do it in any scenario. Think about food, think about excitement, travel, breathe in peace. Slow, soft breathing, heart rate comes down. Imagine yourself in a bubble bath, fragrant, sweet sounds. Do five sense scan through, but picturing yourself in a beautiful place. So, you know, the imagination is a very big thing. And you know, in imagination, you are actually sending endorphins in your system, and ultimately it becomes a reality. Whereas we, you know, are the observable part of a giant universe, you know, which is not helping. So that we already have a blueprint for healing, and cosmic energy is in our system. So please look at this as an important thing, not just an also ran thing. There are no rules, 10, 20 minutes a day, extend it to walking, dancing, like riding a bike, anything you like. So one minute to go. Yeah. Okay. Essential oils, let's just take a picture of it. All of them have been used very successfully. And I think essential oils have been ignored and neglected. They are very powerful. You can't even mess around with them. You can't just drink up a bottle of it. So all of them, uh, have a look at it, and all the times, be happy with it. Even when you have the non-FM uh, thing, they will be of great help in any case. Here is a very important part about the, how to get rid of your pain. This is structured fix. Identify the source very carefully. Specific movements, you know, likely, if specific movements, if it causes more pain, it is a structural problem. Remove the inflammatory allergenic foods. Foam rollers. Must get a foam roller, whether it's a cylindrical styrofoam roller. It is used very carefully for all the muscle groups. It improves the circulation, helps release the muscle tightness, improves range of movements, improves lymph flow, uh, and it doesn't have a dedicated, you know, it doesn't have to have a dedicated pump or something, but you can use uh, your own hands, and there are many, uh, you know, uh, 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 videos that you can see to localize where your lymphatics are and must use them. So it also can, you know, de detect that what is real pain, what is referred pain, and what is really fibromyalgia. There's a difference between pain and discomfort. It should be uncomfortable, not unbearable, and later it makes you feel better. Breathing from the diaphragm, again, I'll be very happy to teach people how to do that. And anytime, I'm uh, open for this. Create a movement and strengthening, uh, you know, neck See neck retraction, shoulder presses, neck roll, shoulder blade, all these things, you know, wherever you are, you know, you can use a door frame, you can use the wall. Keep this in mind that at any point of time, you do something which is, you know, adding to the relief of fibromyalgia. Physiotherapy, anytime, chiropractic, just go back a bit. Go back a bit. Can you see my? Can you see the screen? So the yeah, screen. Just go back one bit. Yeah. No, go back a bit. Yeah. So all this, you know, no, no. Yeah, here. Yeah. So you know, chiropractic, massage, TCM, acupuncture, Korean. Now this is not just uh, written there. Uh, in my uh, dictionary, uh, acupuncture has been the most uh, successful. Uh, there are Korean acupuncturists here. There are you know, people who are doing it very well. So please do not do a poo-poo that this is not important. It's very crucial for this as well. Now, this is the one which uh, I was saying, the next slide. This is a typical tender point, which I said you need to have at least 11 to 14 uh, uh, of these to say, yes, it, it goes in favor of... Uh, I mean, there are 18 of them. So 11 out of 18, if you have, you are more likely to have fibromyalgia. And the very painful, this, all these things. Are. So this is just a simple, uh, you know, um, method to see. We've already gone through it. You can just go through that. And lastly, and not the least, this is the most crucial part, the fibromyalgia questionnaire. And this is the one coupled with the... Uh, you know, that uh, anatomical area is about uh, minimum one. Go through them very carefully, and this will take you as close as possible to what the real fibromyalgia is. Next slide. Yeah, so it's very nicely done up. 
and you can, uh, if you don't understand it later, you can please uh, call me at any time and I can help you to do that. Go again. Go ahead. One more. Yeah, so there is a grand total, a grand total of 13 or greater is likely to be that if it's, you know, so it's very easy and you can at least have a, for the first time, a picture of a structural method of finding out do you or do you not have fibromyalgia? It's the most uh, easy one to do. This is all part of that. Okay, I think this is a large one, and uh, please go over it over and over again. Even if you don't think you have a problem, sometimes my you know fibromyalgia can be very tricky. So thank you, thank you for listening, and. Uh, Again, it was a difficult subject to put together in a short time, but at least I tried my best. We have summed up actually everything which includes in fibromyalgia from diet, from nutrition, supplementation, and uh, checking out the spores as well. Anybody who is interested in understanding and wishes to consult Dr. Alok will put up the details of the same because, you know, once you show a practitioner, it is a different theory all of uh, in, in one again only. So every patient is different from the other patient and he'll be able to analyze if it's a case of fibromyalgia. Uh, as of now, there are no such questions, sir, because uh, there have been questions on the nutrition, but you have explained it all well. So thank you so much for joining us and uh, uh, they'd be definitely looking forward to meet you, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah, please, sir. A little point about pranayam. Uh, yeah. I want to specifically talk about it at some point because uh, I have devised a method, uh, everybody knows that, but I've devised a method to make sure that you are not doing it as an exercise, but you're lost in your uh, thoughts and lost with the universe. And there are special ways of doing that. I'll be very happy to teach anyone. Yes, uh, so definitely. And uh, if uh, IAFM can put up a different lecture for that as well, uh, we'll definitely put up that as well for you. Thank you so much for joining us and taking out your valuable time. Thank you. Thank you.